Motion tracking is something that I'd rather not do, ever. But if you are into visual effects, you kind of have to do it. And Blender's in-house motion tracker is pretty good, except orienting the scene is a big pain in the ass. But there's one software that's pretty amazing in tracking stuff, and that's PF Track. In my opinion, it's, it's even better than Blender's motion tracker. So if you want to include that in your workflow, keep watching. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And unlike my other tutorials, today we are in PF Track, which is an amazing tracking software. Now you'll see. But yeah, I'm done with the intro. So if you open PF Track, this is how it should be looking. Uh, but for if this is your first time opening, you won't be having a project over here that is open. This is just the, I was working on a previous project. Uh, the video should be out, so you, you can watch that. But yeah, this this is the whole tracking that I did over here. So basically what you want to do first is just, well, I know you guys might be a bit overwhelmed uh, just looking uh, at this whole interface. I know it might be new to you guys, but don't worry. This is, this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial uh, just you know me tracking and then we are exporting it to blender but other than that uh, it's it's gonna be a bit of beginner friendly so even if you have no idea how to use this software uh, after you're done with this you will have at least 70 percent knowledge about it either way so okay so over here in the bottom uh, we uh, we are in the project uh, this project settings and if you're over here or over here just click on this which says prj project panel as it says so just click over there and now you'll be where we are right now. Then all you have to do now is just click create. And now this window uh, appears or it it was not there earlier and now it's visible. Oh, I'm thirsty. Anyway, so once that's done, uh, let's just name our project to something like tutorial. Now this is just for me. All right, I'll just name it proper, PF track. it all right and then it's all about saving so I think I'll just go ahead and save it where is it where's my tutorial folder there you go blender and there has to be a PF track folder over here which is not there so let's just create a folder name it PF track to blender yeah and then I'm just going to create another folder and I'm just going to name it PF track. So that way I know that this is where I'll find my tracking data. This is where I'm going to export it. And yeah, so that's there. I'm just going to choose and my project name is P PF tracked it. All that is good. Now we're here in the default clip properties. Uh, I know that I'm going to be working with 30 frames per second. So that's that's chosen over here. Camera piece and all that. Let's just leave it as it, as it is. And then over here, let's just hit confirm. So now, Again, a bunch of <laughs> uh, windows panels appear, but don't worry. Over here in the, it's is it right? Yeah, over here in the right, uh, we get our file directories. So now all we have to do is just select our footage, and it is recommended that you use a JPEG or PNG sequence because it's easier for PF Track to you know, it's just easier for any tracking software to just you know cache it in and all. So I'll just select my footage over here it has to be mm, see very good stable sequence all right so just click and hold and then drag it over here in the left panel to the left panel that is and now as you can see or we can see that we get our footage over here now important thing is that over here in the bottom you have to make sure that everything is correct now as i said i know i'm working with 30 frames per second but PF track by default set it, sets it to 30. So I'm just gonna set this to 30 over here. And now in and out point, that is also important. Now just for this tutorial sake, I'm just gonna keep it at 120, which is like four seconds, I suppose. You know, it's it's not, well, this is just for tutorial sake and I just wanna introduce you guys to this software. But if you have a big file or whatever, just, you know, you can just set the in and out point, but make sure that the frame rate is set to what you'll be working in other software such as Blender or Cinema 4D, whatever it may be. Because if the frame rate is different, the track is gonna look off no matter how good the track is. All right, so that's there. And I think I'll look over here. And then the first thing that we need to do is just, well, let me show you how to navigate, our, navigate around. So if you uh, hold your middle mouse button and move 
you know move your mouse uh, you'll see that we can zoom in and right click and hold gives you the ability to pan right so that's all cool uh, then let's just right, right click on our image over here and then we get a bunch of options so the what we want to do is you know use a track auto track works just fine but i like to you know be more in control and since this is a pretty simple footage i'm just going to go with user track and over here now you can see that this green uh, dot it it means that this is the track that we are showing if i double click over here uh no it doesn't go <laughs> i don't know why i said that but yeah just double click and as this yellow outline is there it means that that is the node that we're on okay so the first thing that we need to do is cache this okay and caching basically means that saving this sequence into your system's storage, which allows the track, which which basically just, you know, it makes, uh, it allows us to see the whole footage uh, live or uh, that, no, live's not the word. What is it? Uh, it allows us to, real time, yeah. It allows us to view the footage in real time and therefore it's easy for us to scroll in and out and all that. So to cache, what you can do is either hit the space bar or you can hit the C key. But remember, depending on your footage, caching all caching requires usually some sort of data, not data, I mean, it requires storage, right? So my cache is set to seven GB or eight GB, meaning that it'll cache up to eight GB in my storage. Now yours might be set to four GB or something. So for this case, I don't think four GB is necessary, but just to make sure, all you have to do is go over here in the settings and then over here in the cache you can you get to change the cache size so as you can see it's 4.79 if you can if you want you can change it if you want you can reduce it it's up to you but make sure to know your hardware settings beforehand all right so once that's done i'm just going to click this c key and now it's going to cache this whole sequence to the memory and since it's it's a pretty small clip i'm not even going to fast forward it you know i'll just let it roll in front of you guys Mm. anytime anytime there you go it's cached and how do you know it's cached well we get this green bar so now i can scrub through it like this all right so that's that's pretty fun now uh yeah let's 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 add a let's 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 get into tracking and over here as you can see in the cache it has cached up to 982 MB. So let's just call it 1 GB, all right? But that that's fine. All right, so track. So to add a track, all you have to do is click on this create button. And well, nothing is happening. And that's because now we have to go in and add in a track over here somewhere. So I'm just gonna uh, hold my middle mouse button and just move my mouse to zoom in over here. Then right hold to just pan around. And I'm just gonna select a point somewhere over here and just left click to add a track. And there you go over here in the bottom, as you can see, it, 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 it gives us a full zoomed in view and we can even adjust things from over here. So something like this. Uh, okay. Mm. Yep, that, that looks fine, I guess. All right. So uh, before I go, go ahead and tell you guys what should be the ideal tracking uh, area let me just talk about the settings over here now search mode we have two options best speed and best best speed and best accuracy now i usually go with best accuracy because you really want your tracks to be more accurate rather than you know speed so just keep it at best accuracy and deformation now we get three options rotate scale and skew now uh, check rotate if your camera is rotating uh, if it's scaling as in it's zooming in and out and then skew means that there's some stretching happening in or whatever the thing is usually in your <laughs> what i do is i just leave all of them on and it's it's really preferred preferred and it gives it it's it doesn't hurt to keep them all on but yeah just so you know that rotation is when the camera's rotating scaling is when it's zooming in and out and skewing is when the points they're they're skewing you know they're stretching like uh, elastic or something uh, in my previous uh, blender uh, motion tracking tutorial i explained all of these models in detail so you might want to check that out so i'm just i'm just not going to waste my time over here right now now failure threshold is something it's kind of the same thing like uh how we have in blender you know so just ideally i like to keep it at point uh 
85 which means that the tracker has to be 85 percent sure about whether it is on you know whether it's accurate or whether it is to the point we had first put it there if it's not then it'll give us an error all right then all of this is cool so blur means uh, that if it is blurry so it'll take care of it illumination means if there is lighting changes uh, then yeah let let us know is what pf track is saying so it'll take into that account too it'll take into that account yeah did i say that right take into account yeah it'll take into account but whatever <laughs> so once that's all said just hit set default now now, now what's going to happen is every time we add in a track it's going to have this setting or you know it's kind of hectic to just go go to every track and change this but now that's set and by the way windows update start frame me it's pretty obvious what that is right uh, no it yeah I th okay i just lost my track so just select this track and we get the settings back uh, I haven't really messed around with this Windows Windows update, uh, but basically it just gives us update about the track. Now start frame is what it is, starting frame. So let it be. And over here we get the zoom window and all that is set. Now over here in the bottom is where you can, you know, select track or track forward. So over here it says uh, track forward by one frame. The And then this says, you know, just track forward to the heck of it or to the end of the footage. Now the shortcut that I like to use, which is of this track forward, is the close square bracket. Yeah, so if I just hit that, it will track. And now over here in the bottom, you can see, you can you get a close look at what's happening. And over here uh, in the S, it kind of gives us a score of the track. So now it's fantastically tracked. So over here, as you can see, we get a score of 0.995. And you can even see the score over here in the bottom, which means that it's a pretty good track. All right, so now let's talk about where to put the tracks. Now, you want to put the tracks where there is, you know, a bit of a contrast in it, as in, you know, uh, for example, this place, you know, as you can see, there are a bit of black pixels and, uh, and then there's a huge shift in contrast where we get something like pinkish or it's not pinkish, but something like that. And that basically, uh, you know gets a track that hey this is this is if you're tracking black pixels and if it shifts to you know pink or whatever the color it it just basically knows that yeah th these are not the pixels i want to be tracking i want to be tracking the black pixels over here so that's the whole thing so make sure corners corners are corners uh, yeah corners are pretty cool to track and they are the must because there's a huge change in contrast and since it, the corners are usually pointy there are sharp sharp pixels over there and that's what we need and as as to where to put this tag the distance between them should be a bit far now i could go ahead and just put my trackers all the way over here in this area you know and call it a day but that way the solver has no idea about the room the depth in the room now we want to give the tracker the, an idea about the room now for example i'm just going to click on this create button again and add in a track somewhere over here right and just bring it up some things yeah, something like that because as you can see the, the, the over here these are black pixels and at the end it starts go, going over to white pixels and that way if I put it at the edge the tracker knows that the these are not the pixels I'm going to track all right but yeah now uh, as you can see there's a lot of distance between them and what that basically creates is parallax so these tracks will be moving faster or when we move these tracks are going to be moving a lot compared to these and that way the the solver knows that okay there's a depth in this room okay this this is this track is behind this and it's at an altitude or something like that but that's what you want to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add in a few tracks and as you can see i'm again i haven't clicked anywhere else so if that's the case you can just keep adding more trackers and it will be fine and also you can change the size of these boxes like this so i guess i forgot to mention that but yeah this this is the inner search box and this is like the it, i guess it's the radius or something it's, it's this is the search panel it's going to look for these pixels outside over here and then feed it to here it's a bit uh, complicated i don't know if i know all of it but it's there if you want to change it so I'm just going to add again a track over here. Yeah, that's perfect. Then we just have to create just add markers where there's a 
just don't add them close together is what I mean. So somewhere over here, I don't think this will stick, but let's see. Uh, again, sharp edges is preferred. So something like this. Remember, you can also move your track over here, okay? And as to how many trackers you should add, I, I don't think there's a rule of thumb, but I usually go more than eight because in Blender you need, like Blender has a rule that every frame there should, there should be at least eight trackers present. So that's that. I'll just, why is my mouse move? Yeah, for, all, for some reason my right click wasn't working. I'll just add in a tracker over here. Put it somewhere over here. Okay, how many trackers do we have? We have seven. Okay, let's add in two, three more. My right click is, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just acting up again, I suppose. Uh, I think I already have a few tracker markers on the ground. Uh, there's a few over there. Let's just add one over here. No one when I tracked for my the v, the VFX shot, I think I added a bit more, and I don't think I added over there, but I don't think it should matter. I'll t I think I'll just bring this one to like like this, you know, the corner. Yeah, something like this. Oh boy, the right click. <laughs> Can you hear me like pressing my right click as hard as possible because it's not working? <laughs> It's good if you aren't, you know, it's a, it's a waste of time, to be honest. Mm, okay, eight trackers. I think that's cool. I'll just add another one. Okay, I already have a few trackers over here, so I don't think I need to. I'll just add another one over here. Or maybe, no, this, I don't think this is going to work, so I'm just going to select this track and hit delete. And over here it says, do you have to delete again? So yes, so basically in PF track, it's just like Blender, you know, if you have to delete something, it, it confirms to you again. So basically you have to press the delete key twice. And I need to change my mouse, is what I know. But, okay, where should I add next? This is taking a lot of time. I'll just add somewhere over here, you know, just to, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with my right? It's not even moving. I don't know what's going on. It's it's like it's dead. I'll just add one over here for the heck of it. Cause why not? Right? But just because I've added it over here, it's uh, the tracker. It's not going to help that much because there's already a point over here and this distance is not that, you know, big. But either way, that's all there. So we have a total of nine points. Now we know that we have tracked this first point, this first tracker over here, and there's no need to track it again. So what we can do is just lock it. So over here in the right, uh, we can just hit lock. And that basically just locks tracker marker, which means that it won't be participating in this next track. Then select this track and then select this track. And then, you know, once that those are all selected and by the way I shift selected them so select this then holding shift select this last one and it basically just selects all of them and then all we have to do is press the open square bracket or sorry the close square bracket key and now that is going to track and at some point while I was tracking this in blender I really got few errors you know and it wasn't that bad I mean the blenders blender solver gave me 0.21 pixel error which is pretty good good <laughs> not cool good but the thing with blender is that i what i face the issue is orientation the, the orientation is a bit pain in blender and there's a lot of manual thing to do and even that it doesn't just you know it doesn't work out sometimes and orientation is a big pain whereas in pf track as you'll see it's one of the easiest things orient orientation is pretty easy in pf track and now you can see it it's working it looks good to me. You can, of course, just go ahead and click on each track and check out its score over there. Yeah, looks perfect to me. Then I'm just going to again select all of these and hit lock. So now these guys are all set. 
all right so time to solve and over here as you can see there's no solve button because there's another node for it so over here just click on this user track node right click then go to solving solving panel over here and then bunch of solvers but the one we need is the camera solver so just click on camera solver solver and boom well a few other settings to make sure over here at least in the camera properties now if you know any of these details like the focal length focal range field of view whatever it is add it there okay add the details right but i don't know i mean i think i know uh, i shot this on my samsung a51 and the camera's focal length is 29 millimeters but just because most of you have no idea what your focal length is i'm just going to keep mine at unknown if you want to change you can keep to known but right now i don't know so i'm just going to keep it at unknown okay and i really don't play around with any of these over here i mean what we could do is just select one point so like select this point over here and then set it as our origin but we can even do that uh, in the orient node which we'll get get to it later so right now just uh just click on solve all over here and yeah wait for it to solve yep so that's done that was pretty fast i didn't fast forward it that's how it is because it's just 120 frames so if you scroll it's, it's, you can see that it tracks pretty well and if you see any red markers you know these are green markers turning where it means that it was a bad track but right now since this is not a bit shaky footage it's good but in blender it did give me some errors so yeah this is <laughs> this is definitely better than blender but anyway so let's just right click over here and now what we want to do is orient this in properly so right click and go to utilities over here and then choose orient scene all right so now again bunch of options so over here in the orientation panel is where we can, you know, set our or set the orientation. So I'm just gonna click over here and we get a bunch of options, translate, rotate, scale. And if, you know, if you choose rotate, then you get the ability to rotate it and, you know, align it properly. But what I like to do is choose the axis mode. Now, like, just like here, what we have to do is just align this axis to what we think is like, you know, the X and Y axis. So I'm just gonna hide the Y and z for now and let's just work with x now x axis is you know the horizontal one y axis is the vertical one and z axis is the depth so which goes inside now you know blender uh, it's kind of the opposite the z is the up axis and then you know y axis is what gives us depth. but in this case we have to work uh, the opposite and don't worry when we export it the, the camera will not be flipped so it it when we export it the the x and y the y and z axis will automatically be converted but just so you know in this case the y axis is the up axis unlike in blender where the z is the up axis all right so we have we just hit the uh y and z axis over here and also over here i think i'm gonna uncheck show ground so that i can you know uh see things clearly and now I know that this line, I just have to align this as X axis to this uh, horizontal line. So to do that, just click, as you can see, if you hover over these lines, we get, we, it, it, it gets highlighted. So just click and hold and bring them to somewhere over here. And if you, while doing that, if you hold shift, uh, it, we can, we probably get a zoomed in window. So something like this. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put it over there. And now this is getting out of line so just i'm just going to select this bring it over here somewhere and then it shift to see it and just yeah bring it over here again this line i'm just gonna go over here bring it to close to this line then it shift to get an idea where it is and as you can see this dark line over here that is the line that i'm uh, matching to so just click anywhere over there and let go again click hold bring it to this line and then shift to better align it all right so we are done with the x-axis and jesus christ this right click is not working so i'm just gonna hide the x-axis and now i'm gonna work with the z-axis because z axis is the depth which is these lines so i think i'll choose this one and bring it somewhere over here and match this yeah something like this then bring this to somewhere over here and again i'm just clicking and holding left click hold and then shift to bring the whole thing to the closed up view or the zoomed in view right and now if i choose show ground or if i enable show ground we can see that this is properly aligned 
and now all we have to do is set an origin point so i'm just going to click this marker over here or what we can do is you know select markers from over there and luckily this is the first marker so once you've selected your marker where, where you want the origin to be just click set origin over here and now it basically just set the old origin and now if we want we can you know choose translate and bring this to somewhere over here and i can't select okay there you go something like this yep and as you can see over here these lines are properly aligned i mean it's not perfect and that's because we haven't mentioned the focal length but again this is pretty good pretty good all right so next thing what we can do is add in a test object so let's just go to utilities and i think there's something over here called test object or i, I think it's in geometry yeah test object and once that's there uh let's just select it just select anything over here cow head or whatever and then what i'm going to do is choose the interpolation mode to place at selected feature so i'm just going to select this point over here this tracker marker if it allowed me to do that i don't know what's going on over here yeah so as you can see wherever i'm putting my selecting my marker this mushroom head is getting added there yeah it's i'm having trouble selecting things but as you can see it's turned so i'm just instead of a cow head i'm going to choose this to tall marker or maybe a thumb track just like this point again i don't know i think uh cow maybe cow uh, there's a lot to play around here so I'm, i'll just again go to a cow head and select this point jesus christ okay so all i guess i have, I have to click uh, duplicate and then choose again another point yeah something like this so again click duplicate and then let's just choose this point too yep and now if we scrub through you'll see that these are tracking properly to it which means that it is a good track and i know it is because well it's well first of all we tracked in pf track and pf track does a very good job at tracking things and second of all this clip is not that difficult to track i mean there's no motion blur and all that i mean there's a movement there's a bit of movement over there camera shaking a bit but that's that's okay all right now now the big thing how do we export it to blender because i know many of you have tried fbx doesn't work and there is no such thing as alembic so let's just go to let's just right click on test object or what i'm going to do is i'm just going to delete this node because i if i export it with this then these objects will get added and i know that it's a good track if you want you can right click and choose uh export over here but i'm just going to delete this and again you have to print you have to press delete twice then right click on the orange set node go to export and choose export all right so in the export settings now as you can see the format that works uh, there's there's a bunch of formats but nothing it, blender ex, uh, accepts well there's no alembic uh there's auto uh, blah 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 there's uh, yes yeah, someone's on but either way the one that works with blender is called colada dae and now all you have to do is go over here in the file name and just select where you want to save so there you go where is it where is it pf track to blender yeah pf track and i'm just gonna stable sequence dae okay save and now all you have to do uh, be, just make sure that this is ticked from frame 1 to 120 that's correct the this is the clip and i don't want to export the uh, sequence then scale you can of course scale it in blender so i'll just show you guys how to do that quickly and frame offset nothing all that is set and now all you have to do is uh, well, these are a few options show name show info show horizon show ground yes and show all tracker markers we'll, we'll, we'll get the, we'll get to know them anyway so all that's left is to click orient scene and sorry export scene <laughs> export scene and there you go as you can see it has export it, it the export succeeded yay there you go good job so what i'm gonna do is just ah jesus i'm just gonna quickly open blender over here now and I think we can exit out of PF track. So uh, let 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 just load. By the way, I'll be in Blender 2.91, right? So yeah.
all right here we are in blender so i'm just gonna click on new general hit a to select everything and x to delete then go to file import and choose colada dau or it's it's a beautiful funny name then just locate where your where you exported the track to select this and don't worry about this let's just hit import and now uh i think i forgot to tell you guys something so let's just select this file and hit general again and don't save so the one thing that you need to make sure is the frame rate has to be preset before you import in this so i know it's 30 fps so that's it and let's just choose this now frame rate doesn't really matter the frame start and end but for some reason every time i used to import in you know these uh, the file and if the frame rate didn't match by beforehand it would give me some error so you know that's that's why i just change this before you import in so now that i know my frame rate is 30 frames per second i'm going to hit a x and then just delete that then go to import colada dae then this is where i exported it so import and now if we are, if i hit zero uh, you'll see that it's 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 there but okay we don't have our footage over here so i'm just gonna click on my camera so just scroll this down this is this camera is parented to a node over here so let's just select this camera and go to our camera properties uh, this is our focal length okay all cool then let's just check background images and by the way my parents are home so you might hear a few noises but yeah then let's just click open and i think i'm gonna go to where where is my uh, i think it's blender mm, where is where is the house animation that video that clip that clip was from a house animation 2 video if you guys saw it, if you guys have seen it so let's just select all of these uh, open clip right and i think i'll just turn on the opacity to yeah like that and now if i add in a plane or let's just add in yeah a plane sounds fine and now you can see that this plane is Usually when we add plane in Blender, it, it's pretty big and this is pretty small, which means that the size is, well, the scale of the scene is pretty bad, right? And if I even add in a cube, uh, the cube, uh, I think is okay, but the plane, yeah, I think it's the same, but this is not how the cube should be because this, the size of the cube is how tall the human is. That, at least that's what I've heard. And this is not how small people are here. So what I'm going to do is select this screen node over here, which uh, which you should ha you should be having it too. So select that. And now all you have to do is hit S and scale it accordingly. So I think somewhere like this would be fine. Now, this is really up to you. Uh, it's... Uh, it's, you should you know you should probably measure some items in your home so to get better precise measurements now this is just me showing how you showing you how to scale stuff but other than that that's it you know that's that's really it that's how you track in pf track and that's how you bring the data from pf track to blender not that difficult eh so yeah you know uh yeah, I know PF track is a bit, a bit expensive compared to blender which is free but trust me the investment is worth it you know uh this this is uh, by far is it, it is definitely better than blender's motion tracking thing i can assure you that and when it when blender crashes or when blender fails to track some things this is where pf track continues on it marches forward and doesn't look back like like one of those hero things you know like there's a blast happening behind and they don't look because they don't care because they're alive fuck the people who are behind them right <laughs> but yeah so that's it for that's it for this tutorial thank you all for watching i think this will be up on P uh, patreon first and maybe after some time this is going to be on youtube so dear patreons thank you for all the love uh, that you're probably giving me as of now i have zero patreons so i don't know if there will be in any in in, there will be any in future but anyway those of you who have who are watching this after investing some money mm, on my channel then thank you so much and yeah that's it so i'll see you in the next one until then, be infinite.